It is 1966. In his studio, famed Hollywood couturier Jean-Louis is designing a wardrobe modern as tomorrow. Waistline, anywhere from hip to bust. Skirt length, short, short, short. For what picture? For this one. You're kidding. This is back in the 20s. Correction, the exciting 20s. That's when a staid old world began to go mod. Observe, please. Get the idea? But presto, a turn of a door, and suddenly we have a thoroughly modern Millie. Hey, that's Julie Andrews. Down, Buster. The revolution in dress that started in the emancipated 20s is still going on. Let's study it a bit through Millie and her friends. Uh, hold it, Millie. Ladies, it's all yours. Take it away. Simple yet jaunty in spirit, this everyday outfit as worn by Julie Andrews consists of a light gray jumper of thin wool with black pocketed hip bands, pleated skirt, white silk crepe blouse, no synthetic fabrics in those days, you know, and green accessories. Being newly emancipated, but a working secretary on a slim budget, Millie, bright girl that she is, simply alters accents and colors, and voila, she has several changes. But Millie always dresses with flair. This white silk crepe has black and white checkerboard trim at the hip line, checkerboard bordered sleeves, and hat. Paneled strips over a vermilion skirt and a vermilion carnation add a dash of color. A charming little number for street and restaurant wear. Silver gray crepe with white polka dots, dicky and cuffs of white organdy, coral hat, and coral trim. The skirt is three-tiered and circular. Dash in a dinner dress. You'll find it in the harlequin cut of the gunmetal trim in skirt and cuff over a dress of cornflower yellow crepe georgette, belted at the hips. Millie's go to a wedding dress is misty gray souffle with handkerchief hem skirt, split sleeves, worn with matching tulle hat trimmed with pink roses. Just great. What do you wear to vamp your boss? Millie has the answer. Let your eyes flash lightning, and your costume, too. The dress is of black and white satin crepe. The hat is black and white felt. Does it work? Let's see. Do you have a moment? What? A moment. I would just love to get a bad opinion of him, Rudolph Valentino. Mm. I mean, in the chic, he takes Agnes Ayres by brute force. And she enjoys it. She enjoys it a lot. Mm. What is your opinion of brute force, Mr. Graydon? Millie's friend, Miss Dorothy, is very rich, very conservative, very elegant, and dresses accordingly. Hey, that's Mary Tyler Moore from the Dick Van Dyke Show. For a party, then or now, what could be happier? Ice blue satin veiled with white net, blue rose petals scattered on a skirt of silk net. The matching shoes have diamond buckles. Also in the party mood, a yellow chiffon hand-embroidered cheese with a low-belted paneled sash. Glamour for the boudoir or the house party. Pajamas of pale blue satin with harem trousers banded at the ankles and a touch of luxury in the paneled chantilly lace sleeves. A dress for many occasions, this to wear as a wedding guest. Pink chiffon and lace, many-tiered and pleated skirt, and pink rose petal picture hat make this a picture indeed. What ever happened to basic black? Here it is in black lace over nude, sunburst pleated skirt, black satin sash tied with a yellow rose, and shoes with cut steel buckles. But let's not leave Miss Dorothy without seeing her in her wedding gown, Jean-Louis' dream creation. The dress is of Allenson lace with tulle skirt, lace bodice and veil. The tulle veil banded with lace is delicately trimmed with orange blossoms. A dream indeed. But it's that dolly, Carol Canning, playing the richest and wildest widow since Auntie Mame, who gets to wear Jean-Louis's most glamorous way out costumes and jewels. Topped by a hat trimmed with bleached white vulture feathers, Carol's outfit consists of a white speckled silk dress with side panel and bolero effect in back. For a simple accent, 
a rather stupendous emerald necklace and bracelet. But everything about Muzzy is stupendous, even her walking outfit. Knickerbockers of heavy silk, silk tie and shirt, diamond stick pin and cufflinks. Even the hand-knit pullover has a diamond pattern. Muzzy's hostess tea gown is white silk crepe. The bell sleeves are trimmed in curled ostrich. The rope belt is weighted with diamond spheres. Accessories? A diamond choker. For airplaning, one needs something special. And Muzzy's flying costume certainly is. White silk, patch pockets, ermine collar and cuffs. The trousers are banded and buckled. Under the jacket, a cashmere sweater. Diamond choker and buckles, of course. In an outfit like this, any girl could fly. A house party at an elegant mansion requires something special in night attire. With romance in mind, Julie wears white satin crepe pajamas under a sleeveless white chiffon negligee with ruffle trim and turquoise belt and bow. No wonder the house party becomes a pajama party. Muzzy's pajamas are of crepe georgette, pleated and tiered sleeves and pants. Note the long necklace. But the piece de resistance is this diamond dress. Designed for fluid movement, the dress is nevertheless fully encrusted with jeweled bugle beads and diamonds. The panels are designed to swing and sway over a nude skirt. A diamond dog collar and bracelets add sparkle to the overall effect. But the most sparkle, the greatest joie de vivre, radiates from Carol herself. <coughs> yes, zest and high spirits characterize the costumes in Ross Hunter's thoroughly modern Millie, as befits a zestful and spirited time, the beginning of the mod age. Thank <laughs> you.